Hello there YouTube and welcome back to War Thunder guys and welcome to the dev server for update 1.89. Before we get into talking about any of the new vehicles, I just want to say this is the dev server so anything you do see on here is subject to change. The armor ratings, the penetration values, stat cards, reload times etc etc. Don't go ranting on the forums quite yet, wait until the live server. If there's still issues or vehicles are bugged in any way, then by all means, you know, let them know about it. For, for the moment, you know, this is a dev server. If there's something wrong, I'm sure it will get changed. So we are going to start off with the Americans and the Bradley ADATS, which is this damn thing. Oh my God, it looks absolutely lethal. So this is a Bradley's chassis, as you can see. The armor values are exactly the same, except we have eight missiles up here and a 25 millimeter cannon with 600 rounds of ammunition now these aren't just for shooting at aircraft these are actually for shooting at tanks as well and it is mental right because you've got things like the tunguska which are just obscene at killing tanks because you know the missiles are really good however the missiles for the tunguska do not have a lot of penetration these ones however these have 900 millimeters of armor penetration on zero degrees of armor. Oh my god, that is absolutely mental. And looking at the rounds for this as well, we have some obscenely good rounds. The default rounds alone, 110 millimeters at point blank range at 10 meters. Then we go on to the M792 rounds. These are heat. Um, or high explosive incendiary tracers and armor piercing like APDS again 110 millimeters but these are more I'd say for shooting at aircraft then we get to the M791 M791 yeah I was right there <laughs> these are predominantly APDS for killing tanks with a few high explosive incendiary shells thrown in for good measure but it's the missiles that really do shine through so this is basically just a Bradley shell I'm not gonna or chassis I'm not gonna go really into that but we are gonna take it out for a test drive and I just want to show you just how good this is now I am on the PC okay I am not a PC player <laughs> not when it comes to War Thunder anyway <laughs> so oh shit I'm zoom in what this guy pink rain Again, no, we won't. I press the wrong button. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Got there eventually. This also has an absolutely obscene zoom. So, here is a T64. That is your normal zoom. That is your increased zoom. 900 millimeters of pen. We're going to put the missile right about. There. Oh, there we go. Bye bye. That is just an absolutely lethal missile. Absolutely lethal. Missile. Oh, that was just a Should have actually aimed that one. Fucking hell. I am definitely looking forward to this. It doesn't have a safety Unfortunately, but to be honest with you, I don't think it's really going to need one. It is just mental. We do have another jet up, but fuck shit at that. We've got something over here with um, FPA8. Let's zoom right in. I'm not sure about the zoom. I think it zooms in a bit too far. There we go. So let's take this forward so you can see it moving and in action. It is just beautiful. It really is amazing. And you do have a lovely ESS smoke screen that comes out behind. 
as well as the missile being pretty decent. Um, I'm not entirely sure what binding this is to change the um, distance on it actually. Let's have a look. So, where's the radar? Radar. Change radar mode. Switch radar on and off. No. Um, do, 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 do. Which one is it? I can't. I don't think it's scale. Is it scale? I I have no fucking clue. So let's just hit. Let's hit. What what have I got bound? Hang on. Let's hit this one. So let's see. Yeah. Just continue anyway. Just go back. Uh, yep. Yeah, there we go. Fifteen kilometers. Thirty kilometers. Holy shit! So you go from ten kilometers at fifteen and thirty. Jesus Christ, this has a 30 kilometer capacity. That's the problem. pretty decent though I'll quickly restart give another quick go with the missiles because this is going to be a long video you know it's going to be a long video but it's going to be worth it so lock him lock him lock or not doesn't want to lock not sure why there we go That's the worst part about locking them, I hate doing that. So, go on to that normally. Let's wait until he comes around actually so we can see him. And I do eventually hit him. I didn't see him before and I hit him behind that tree. Right, I'll move this one. Again, behind the goddamn tree. Him. I think I'm leading him too much. There we go. Actually not that hard to use this one. Oh there he is. I'm straight out. There we go. <laughs> what a fucking joy that is going to be to play. Uh, the Russians aren't going to be the only ones now with Grand Air missiles, but these missiles are just absolutely obscene. So the second vehicle for the Americans is the A2 D1 Sky Shark. And yes, it is called a Sky Shark. Not quite sure it looks like a shark, but I do like it. I really do like it. And this carries some decent bombs. So this is a premium. Um, I'm not sure how much it is because it was literally just sort of given to me. As soon as I logged in, bang, there's all the vehicles. Ta-da. So starting off, you have no load. Then you have 20 HVARs. You have 20 500s. What? That can't be fucking right. 20 500s. <laughs> two 1000s. Two 2000s. 
two two 2008500s. That can't be right. How is that right? Holy shit. Okay. But how can it have 20? How? That can't be right. That can't be right. Oh my god! <laughs> Holy shit! There is 10 500s per wing. I thought that was a fucking bug. <laughs> I didn't check that when I first logged in. Holy fuck! Oh, I'm buying myself one of these. Hell yes. I am definitely getting one of these. So, two 2000s, eight 500s, then we go to... 20 HVARs and two 1000s or you can have two torpedoes. I just can't get over 2500s. Oh my god. That is fucking obscene. I love it. That is so OP. I love it. I just need this. I really do need it. Oh my good god. That is obscene. Okay, let's take this out for a quick test flight and see just what it's like. I did have a little test, but I weren't really sort of paying much attention to it. So I wanted to obviously flick through and see what everything we've got. Let's go off the ground and we'll have a look in the cockpit. I just can't believe, oh my god, I can't believe how many fucking bombs we're having. of a bomb load it's like the ad2 you know i love the ad2s i'm just too fucking obsessed with bombing with those and this is going to be my new my new go-to and if it stays at 4.7 i'm going to be very happy because i can use this alongside the ad2 as well and i will be very happy so we're going to go on to germany they only get one vehicle dispatch i have had oh my god i have had a look and I can't see anything else. I did have a look in the notes and literally this is it. This is all they get in. But to be quite honest, you did get a couple of jets last update, so <laughs> don't be too damn trodden. So before we have a look at that, I just wanna show you just how look at the wingspan on this fucking thing. Honestly, look at the wingspan. That is mental. It is absolutely mad. 
it does have two 20 millimeter mg 151 cannons with 900 rand and it has four 13 millimeters um it doesn't really have armor though <laughs> i think that's the um pilot seat and that is literally it well compact so there's a 13 millimeter in the nose we have the gunner a pilot gunner a gunner another gunner there two gunners three four fucking hell so we have one up here that oh there you go that's a 20 i'm assuming these ones 13s yep 30 millimeter 13 up here at the top is another 20 so those are two 20s and there you go another 13 millimeter so one two three four 13 millimeters and the two 20 millimeters are up on the top turrets oh no not that so bomb loads bomb loads we have nine 250 kg bombs or we have nine oh three 250 kg bombs and six 500s or we can have two 1800 kg bombs and three 250s or four 1000s either way that is a really decent bomb load so i'm going to take this for a quick test flight because you know what why not you might as well i'm on the dev server i'm showing you these bloody things i'm not i'm not holding that much hope for its um maneuverability because it is just so big but you never know it might be okay okay we've got a nice bit of wind get off the wind Come here, MiG-15, attack me. I don't think he's gonna. <laughs> that is some pretty decent fire. But where you're gonna be more vulnerable is from below. You've only got that one 13mm. And it's really not gonna take much to sort of shoot this down from below and behind. Ah, there we go. Still with a placeholder cockpit though, unfortunately. But it's still pretty spacious I guess. The old Fritz there. Franz. Console there. Let's switch. Uh, open the bomb bay. Oh look at that. Holy shit. Holy shit. Just drop them. See what kind of big boom it makes. Can't even see it. Oh there they are. There they are. In. Oh, lovely. <laughs> let's try a bank. Let's see. Wow, for something this big, and it's got combat plans. Oh, that's not good. Oh, no, shit. Retract. <laughs> okay, banking hard is fine, but um, combat flaps when banking hard, not a good idea. It's a lot more manoeuvrable than I thought it was going to be considering its size, but this might be a placeholder um, like flight model, so I wouldn't get your hopes up quite yet. But that seems pretty, pretty decent actually. You know, if they leave it like that, I think the only issue this is going to have, um, well, biggest issue it's going to have is just that one thirteen millimeter defensive machine gun in the towel at the back here. Um, second issue, it's 4.7 and it has a maximum repair cost of 53,424 silver lines. That's at 4.7. Now, I do understand this is obviously a very powerful aircraft, but that is a very steep repair cost for it very steep and to be honest at 515 miles an hour it's really not that fast either so um yeah we're gonna have to see about that repair cost hopefully they look at it and change it before the update because that is pretty steep so on to the russians we're going to start off with the grozo and it is basically just um a rank two um minesweeper i want to call it i want to call it a minesweeper and um, what does it say it says here no, it doesn't tell you what it is <laughs> i'm going to go with minesweeper so we have some torpedoes here 
We have some defensive guns. Let's see. Has it got any armour? Not really. <laughs> that is the smallest little sh um, bit of armour that I've seen on the gun. So, not sure which ones are which. So, we have 37mm. We have a 102mm cannon. Another 37 Then we've got the torpedoes, obviously. Um, I'm assuming a 37 Yep. And another 102mm. This doesn't have much in the way of armour as you can see though um, depth charges we have a few of them um, 12 depth charges to be precise so yeah until they actually give us a proper reason for using depth charges I just I just don't use them they tend to explode um, I'll give it a quick sail at see what it's like um, you do get some shrapnel shells for it as well as HE defaults However, I'm not sure how effective they're really going to be, but, you know, we'll give it a, a little go. So, let's see, let's switch to this. Let's try it. Oh, wait, the gun. oh my god, where's the gun? Why is the gun up there? Okay, let's go ahead, full and turn. <laughs> we are turning. I, honestly, we are turning. Now, where are the depth charges on this? Are they on the back? Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so you, you kind of have to be quiet and shoot. There we go. Let's try one of these shots now. Not the quick reload. These are the shrapnel rounds. Um, I'm not sure. Is that is that really ten? Let's see. Yeah, that is that is minimal damage. Let's switch back to the heating. I think the shrapnel rounds would be better for much lower tier. The he should have a good chance of ten in those. Yeah, there we go. That did much more damage. Not very quick though, 24 miles an hour. Let's try this little boat and get in. Come on, come on, I need a lead. <laughs> and he turns off. <laughs> Pulls he does. So yeah, I mean, it, it's not bad to be honest, but I wouldn't say it was overly amazing. Step charges do not want to. Oh, there we go. I'm not sure why it took so long to do that, but there you go. Um, yeah, I mean, if you like Russian tugboats or um, minesweepers, whatever the fuck it's supposed to be, then yeah, that's for you. Personally, I'm more excited about this. <laughs> this is what I want. This is what I'm excited about. Look at this. So let's have a quick look over the armor. Now, I'm not holding much hope because it does look very thin yeah it is just way for thin that that's going to be penned by 50 cows easily penned by 50 cows Mo seems like the most armor is literally here <laughs> oh no there you go you got 20 millimeters on there for the missile um inside you just have this huge auto loader of missiles only two crew only two crews so as soon as you're hit one of these guys dead that's it the whole thing's dead but it has got a really low profile it is 38 miles an hour and the missiles the missiles are pretty good hang on that's the wrong one missiles so we get two lots of missiles here your default missiles are 560 millimeters of pen at all ranges at zero degrees 484 at 30 degrees at all ranges and at 60 degree at all ranges 279 which ain't too bad but you get the second set of missiles which is on the second line so you don't have to go down too far and that is 800 across the board at all ranges on zero degrees of armor which isn't bad and when you get to 60 degrees of armor it's 399 so even so it's still not bad 9.3 br um i'm not sure if that's a bit optimistic I think it might be considering it doesn't have any armor and it only has two crew. Personally, I'd rather see this at 
but you know we'll see they might come to their senses and put it down which ones are that yeah there we go we want to start for these ones this also has an absolutely amazing reload mechanic i'm not sure if it's been shown on the um dev blog but we, you'll see it in a second right stop drinking my drink <laughs> so you can traverse this um, missile quite far around although it doesn't seem to really go down i'm not sure what's going on with this it, it just doesn't seem to line up very well um <clears throat> if we go into the gun mode though you can see what i mean it's <laughs> i don't know what's going on with this it's easy just to do this so i'll line it up sort of Yes, watch this. <laughs> We've got to wait for a second. And then, ta-da! We've got a new one! Woohoo! And we can do it again. So let's go for this Leo this time. Okay, going that. And dead. And then it falls back in and reloads. You can't use this on the go. I'm just wait until it reloads. I'll show you what I mean. So, how the brandy works is when you drive, the missile launching arm goes in. This is exactly the same. This does exactly the same thing. You'll see it in a second as soon as I get to a certain speed. There we go. I think it was about 14 miles an hour and it folded back in. So, once it does that, you obviously can't fire on the move. You don't have any machine guns on this as well. There's no auto cannons, no machine guns. And as you see here, can't fire on the nose. These little flaps here at the back also um, detract, not detract, will fold it down, I'll say. Because when you jump into some water, it does become amphibious. Uh, I'm not sure it's going to take that long to get there. But I might edit this bit out. I might not. We'll see. It depends how long it takes. Because it does do a decent speed of 38 miles an hour. But I'd be more inclined to see this. Okay then, so we are fast approaching the water, which we want. And I want to move this around this camera. Just keep an eye on those little mudguardy type looking things. So as soon as I hit the water, those will fold down to reduce the splash or whatever it is. I'm not sure what it is. It just looks cool. And then the missile launcher will obviously pop back up again. So here we go. Down they go. And then I slow down. Yeah, it's, it, it seems like six, seven miles an hour. This is okay to use. But the thing is, it's not stabilizing. So we let it stop. <laughs> go into the gun sight. That's what you've got to deal with. It is not what you would call a steady shot and I can't even aim at that building over there I just can't it won't let me oh my god that's terrible <laughs> let's try it <laughs> you just end up floating around and not being able to shoot but still if you get into a sticky situation and you can get across a river or you know dive into it and hide well it might save your life so let's go back to the hangar and go on to the next nation. I do like the, um, I, can't, I can't remember the name of it. What is the name of it? The sh oh, I can't even pronounce that. <laughs> I cannot even pronounce that. Stuttern? 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 <laughs> Fuck if I know. I don't do um, weird languages. <laughs> Bless the Russians. I can't, I can't speak fucking Russian words like that. So here we are on to the Stormer, the Stormer HVG, HVM, oh my god, I'm getting tongue tied, don't know what I'm talking, start again. So this is the Stormer HVM, there we go. This is obviously the same sort of chassis that the Swing Fire is on, not the Swing Fire, the Striker. Could not remember the name of it, so if I go to the Striker, bring that up, you can see it's very similar to that go back and it's basically the same thing bit more on top here but this is Britain's new SPAAG which is just brilliant so this has 16 
um, Star Streak missiles and you have eight smoke launchers. This doesn't have access to a auto cannon like um, the Bradley does, but it's still pretty decent. It doesn't carry much armor. It's basically the same as the Striker's um, armor package, which is practically non-existent. So if you get shot, um, you might survive, but then again, the likelihood is you probably won't. If you survive one, the second shot will probably kill you. Inside you do have free crew, so you do have a bit of an advantage there. Then you've got all the missiles in here at the back. Fuel tank, engine, radiator, transmission. So not too bad. I'll show you the missiles as well. So you only get access to the star streaks. And it is only 50 millimeters of pen at all ranges on zero degrees. For some reason it says at 500 it's 49 millimeters. It then goes to a thousand and says it's 50. So <laughs> that's got to be a bug. But we will take it for a little test drive. And this does fire little darts. So when it gets to a certain distance from its target, it basically separates and fires three darts at its target and hopefully takes them out. So I'm not sure if I can get this one straight away. Try it, wait until it goes far. Nope, missed him. Again, come on, come on, come on. Nope, missed him. <laughs> I am not very good with these. Where's the other one? I might be able to get that one instead. Yep, there we go. That was better. I think the other one was a bit too close for my liking. Made it a little bit harder to get him. Wait until he comes round again. Try and get a shot on him. Let's see. Oh my god. I am so bad at this. Hang on, let's try now. Nope. How the fuck do I still keep missing him? Again? Come on! <laughs> My fucking aim, I get the one that's really far away and then I can't hit the one that's right at me. Oh, I am useless. <laughs> I really am useless with them. Uh, let's have a take a, let's just take a shot at this T64. Got a really decent zoom again though. So, can't grumble about that. Let's go for the lower glacis. Yeah, you can see little darts come out there. They do sort of separate and go in all different directions. So the likelihood of killing up the light AT64 is slim. However, if you go for something like this, oh my god, what is it doing? No, click the wrong one. If you go for the ZSU, you should be able to kill it really easily. Set them on fire. There we go, killed. And we aim at here. Yeah, nope. Oh, damn it. Didn't pen. Let's try that. Come on. Come on. You can pen. Oh, it doesn't want to. I know it can. I know it can. Oh, there we go. We got the gunner and the cannon barrel so he can't fire his missiles. But yeah, I mean, bit of perseverance. Luck of the draw with the missiles. And you probably can kill tanks. I mean, if you go up against a Leo A1A1, that's probably going straight through. It wouldn't take much to um, penetrate a Leo. Russian tanks are a little bit more sturdy. So here we're on to the Hunter F6. Not quite the electric lighting that we wanted, but, you know, still a good um, plane, I guess. I mean, it's a Hunter. It's slightly faster than the one we've already got in. 713 miles an hour sub supersonic jet we do have four missiles though slung under the wings and um, we get two 500s two 1000s or two scram missiles uh, sorry four air to air scram missiles which aren't too bad you also get the 30 millimeter aiden cannons as well which are pretty decent and as you can see here they're just 
Oh, I just love this plane. Love it. We're going to take it for a, a test flight because it is good. It is, and I did have a little fly with this. I wanted to see how fast I could get it going without breaking the wings. So I will do that again for you guys in a second. Just take off. And we have a look in the cockpit as well as we're sort of getting going. So it's pretty much the same as the Hunter that we already have in. Uh, can't really see much in the way of differences. But, you know, it's a good plane. And I'm more than happy to take another jet with missiles from British. Even though it's not supersonic, it still should be quite competitive. Well, at least I'm hoping so anyway. <laughs> I'm hoping so. Okay, let's get after this in 15. We're going to have to let it fall up there. It does, it, it is faded, but it does take a little bit to get going. There we go, now we're starting to pick up the speed. You do have to be quite close to these missiles as well. And again, with these missiles, they have to contact the actual planes that you're trying to kill, they're not like the American ones where if they even get remotely close they'll explode and take the plane out. These don't have proximity fuse, so they have to connect. Yeah. Gonna get him. Oh! Bingo! There we go. <laughs> Did not think that we're gonna get him to be honest on that turn. Okay, it doesn't have afterburners either, unfortunately. So we're going to have to deal with just flying at a normal sort of pace. But I must say, it is pretty good when it gets going. So let's go as fast as we can. Get up to, I think we can get up to about 710 on the deck and then pull up to around about 18, 19,000 feet. And then I'm going to dive back down and just see how far I can get to go. See if I can look for the skill to see they just that. Almost at my top speed. A little bit more you can see it's trying to pop out. Where's it going to pop out? Ooh, 709. Any more? Nope. Okay, 709 we popped out. Straight up. Oh, this is a beautiful looking plane. It really is a beautiful looking plane. Still doing these speed as well. 500 and we just hit 10,000 feet. Come on, still going. Still going. 14, 15. Woo! Fucking hell. I think when you get to about 2 people with turnover. Okay, that's it. Flat. I'm going to dive back down as quickly as we can. So there we are, just under 21,000. Turn back down and see just how far we can get this going. Hopefully, we can do at least. I reckon it can do at least 750 or thereabouts. It should be able to do without ripping the wings. I did have a go earlier, but I didn't really have much sort of speed testing. So, 760. Oh no, I just hit Mac 1. I just hit Mac 1. <laughs> I had to lift up, but I did hit Mac 1. That was good. So there you go. It is supersonic. You just re really do run the risk of ripping your wings off. But you can hit Mach 1 with it, as I just proved then, unless this is a placeholder and then just sticking with us. <laughs> but, pretty decent. I mean, the roll rate's not too bad. Could be better, I guess. Um, let's see. Uh, we are doing a bit of I'm not going to use the air brake. And it's still got some manoeuvrability. It's not amazing. It still kind of flies like the other Hunter. But at least it's got some air square missiles and some manoeuvrability. 
and it can just about hit Mach 1. Or if it does hit Mach 1, you, you do run the risk of, as I say, ripping your wings. That was quite close. <laughs> then we go on to HMS Southampton. And I'm a little bit disappointed, I will say, that we haven't got a heavy cruiser for the British, considering the Japanese have got one. But HMS Southampton's not bad. I'm not going to grumble. This is a town class cruiser like HMS Belfast. Um, so I'm quite happy to see her in game she looks pretty lethal tons and tons of armor along the side here really really thick armor so I'm happy about that decent armor on um, the ship itself I mean it could be better you, you are gonna still lose your guns you're gonna lose the bridge because it doesn't hold a lot of armor but still it's pretty decent the ammo stores are they are quite low the deep ones are like the main ones are quite low however the ready racks which these are basically to feed the turret are above the water line um, again here these are below the water but these sort of ready racks are above the water line so quite vulnerable we do get torpedoes here and here six in total so not too bad um, I'm not sure how well it's going to do against um, a heavy cruiser, but we do have, if I click the correct thing, we do have some 6 inch SAPBC shells, <coughs> semi armor piercing ballistic cap shells, 203 millimeters of penetration at a thousand meters. So they're still pretty decent, they are going to do a decent amount of armor penetration. Um, these ain't too bad, I wouldn't say they're amazing, but you know, for smaller craft like destroyers and stuff, these should just um, chew into them, especially at close range. So, 37 miles an hour as well, which is usually the sort of top speed you get out of a cruiser. We'll see how much damage we can do with these cans, though, against the destroyer and the light cruiser that are on this. Let's also see the anti-aircraft Boom! <laughs> That's pretty decent. That is pretty decent. Which one is it? There we go. Stop them from shooting at the ship. Okay, what we've got? Armor. I'm not firing. Oh, there we go. That was a hell of a hit. Jesus Christ. Ah, oh, there we go. One of the turrets wasn't all the way around. Fucking hell. That is going to be devastating. I'm looking forward to this. Really am. Let's switch to the armor piercing. That's going to go. Yep, there we go lovely so I'm not quite sure which one this is it's a German one obviously Let's see where it lands BAM that is a decent spread and not a lot of damage done but I guess enough to sort of give the enemy something to think about wait for the reload and fire again how many salvos is it going to take to take this out? I'm doing minimal damage. I am taking down the crew, but minimal damage. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally just nibbling, nibbling away at it. I must say though, it is a really good grouping on the salvos. They are staying together really well, but they're just not seeming to really do a lot of damage. That was a bit better, however. Got the engine room, got some more crewmen. That really is a tight grouping. Let's bring the guns over a little bit more. What I tend to do though with um, the German cruisers is aim for the last two. Let's see if I can hit it. 
because you can right at the end of the um, fuel tank see the ammo rack a little further over and you can ammo rack them just at the end of those fuel tanks if you're going to run yeah that's just going too far over I'm, I'm not sure what's going on if you see the rack it seems to be off to the side for some reason but yeah I mean pretty decent it should be quite fun to use. I don't think it's going to be as powerful as the Brooklyn. But it's still going to be pretty powerful for the Royal Navy and something to look forward to. So now we're on to the Japanese. So this is the Fukuyama. I hope I said that right. This is the first light cruiser for War Thunder. And holy fuckadoodles. That is absolutely fucking terrifying. 200 millimeter cannons literally 200 millimeters it is just fucking insane i don't really need to buy much more for this then we have another light cruiser at 5.3 but the Ar argino 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 <laughs> this is at 5.3 so just before the fukuyama then we have the keto again that just it just looks, they look vicious. Another 200 millimeters there. Um, what are the guns on this one? 15 centimeters, so 152 millimeters. Okay, and then you got 200 millimeters. And then we have, which is effectively your first light cruiser. Personally, I wouldn't say this is a light cruiser. It looks more like a really big destroyer. 140 millimeter cannons. I'll show you guys the tech tree so you can have a nice little look at it. So starting at revert, um, reserve, we have the T14, then we have the T1, which is obviously a placeholder fucking um, thumbnail or picture for it. So yeah, it's a little, little dinky thing. Then the T38. Okay, kind of reminiscent of um, sort of early British and American mighty torpedo boats um, then we have this one I, I'm not even going to be pronouncing these anymore <laughs> I'm just not going to we we'll just call it the type 2 then we have the pioneer oh my good god it looks like something from the American Civil War <laughs> holy shit then we have this one oh my god Oh my days! I I I have no words. <laughs> then we have this one, the Model One. I haven't even seen these. This is literally the first time I'm seeing these. What's that? Couple of 57 millimeters. Oh no, a 57 millimeter and a 20 millimeter. I guess. Oh my god. Um, then we have a Type Five, whatever that is. Okay, we're, sl we're getting slightly bigger now. 75mm Type 88 AA on the front. And two 20mm cannons here and here. It's not bad. You've got some depth charges on the back of your cable or carrying. Kind of looks like a tugboat. Um, Char 2 or Chi 2. Wow, that's very thin. Oh my god, it looks really top heavy. Um, yeah, got that. That's got a, a 40mm there. And. 225 millimeters oh there we go there and now um, let's see what else we got CH8 okay oh there we go that looks a bit better twin 40 millimeter at the front now another oh three 25 millimeter cannon so one two three mm, not too bad what what's the speed 19.7 miles an hour not exactly a speed demon then we have this the number 13 type 1944 a lot of these just look like sort of minesweeper sort of gunboat things um, T51B I'm not sure what that is I haven't seen it oh there we go we've got some torpedoes now nice that does 27.6 stock so that's not too bad then we have this type 11 let's have a look at this Ooh, more torpedoes. 39 miles an hour. Pretty good. 40 millimeter bofers. And another one on the back. That's nice. Good, good. 
or aft of the ship or boat. <laughs> I, I'm not even pronouncing these words. I'm sorry. I'm just I'm not doing the names. There's no names. These don't have names for me. That's pretty cool looking. Looks quite modern. We have some missile launching systems here, but obviously they don't work at the moment. We have a crane in case you need to crane something on board. Then we have what's that? I guess in a 40 millimeter bofers, yeah. And that would be a three inch um, Mark 33 gun. Okay, cool. I'm not sure how good that's going to be, but I'm sure it will be pretty decent. Um, then we're on to destroyers. So oh, I was about to say, how the fuck is that turret down there? But it's not. It's torpedoes. <laughs> so we have. Two, four 120 millimeter cannons so one two three four and six torpedoes not too bad it doesn't look like it has much anti-aircraft capability two 7.62 millimeter uh, machine guns oh that's not good <laughs> then we have this one here i think this one was on the dev blog so again nice little um destroy it for the japanese three turrets with six cannons then we're on to this one and again we've got three turrets no yep yeah, we've got three turrets with six cannons and some torpedoes which is quite nice again not much in the way of anti-aircraft sort of capability and then we're on to this one yeah they're all pretty reminiscent of each other really aren't they Although this one does have four turrets with um, two guns in each, which is pretty decent. Then, as I say, you got the um, Fuki armor, this one, um, which is first, if I drop this down. So we got this one as your first light cruiser. Then you go on to the Kato, which is obviously this one is your second light cruiser with 200 millimeter turrets. So you get one, two, three, four, five, six, which is pretty decent. And you get smaller caliber ones here, which are 120s along the side. And then onto your um, third cruiser, which is the Agino, I guess it's pronounced, um, which is this one, which I do like with a 15 centimeter, 100 and, what did I say, they were 152 millimeter, yeah. And then onto the Fukuyama or Fukiaka or whatever the fuck it's called. <laughs> My Japanese is terrible. Please don't slate me in the comments. And this has, this is the light cruiser. This is the one that we all want, I guess. It just looks deadly. It really does look deadly. And onto, do you know, do you know what? We're going to take this one for a set test now. We are sort of um, burning the midnight oils here, but it's fine. Okay. Let's do that. There we go. Thank you. Let's have some fizzy while I'm loading in as well. I'm, I am looking forward to the Japanese. I want to know down below if the Japanese do have, you know, a decent lineup and people start playing them. Is it really going to populate the game mode or do you think it's still going to be as dead as it already is? Personally, I think it's going to be dead. I don't know. I want to see Naval do well. But even with the Brooklyn being in, as powerful as that is, there just isn't a lot of people playing. Which is really sad. Okay, let's, let's go for this one. We've already got the... Um, Then again, wow, it is 200 millimeters. 200, yeah, 200 millimeters. Should be devastating. Okay, come on. Why is that not doing as much as I thought it would do? To be honest with you, it's really not. I 
think this is going to be a real problem for this boat. The reload is very slow. This should sink in one or two shells. It should only take a couple of salvos to take it down. And they missed. Oh, they took a lot of things. I'm an idiot. I'm too busy fucking waiting for the reload. There we go. This should be a lot of damage. It's quite a bit of damage. Only a single salvo aircraft is there. Three, maybe two salvos. Still didn't quite kill it, which is unfortunate. I'm hoping, you know, the, the 200mm cannon would do a bit more damage than they connected. Go to the salvage Here we go, that's a hit. Almost there, almost. So you're looking maybe three to four salvos, even for a um, destroyer which is kind of shitty you know 200 millimeter cannons very slow reload though then we're on to the j5n1 another twin engine heavy fighter um i just i don't know how i feel about all these heavy fighters for the japanese to be honest it doesn't get any bombs unfortunately it is um, an interceptor does have some grand ammunition but <laughs> it doesn't look like it's going to be very effective I'm not going to fly it if you want to see me fly it leave a comment below and I can always um, bring it out for the next dev server opening so we're on to the Italians with the OF-40 MTCA fuck me there we go got there eventually so this is um, the United Arab Emirates um, export version it is slightly faster. It has a thousand horsepower. Um, I don't think the ammunition is different. Um, oh god, damn it! Stuttering here. <coughs> um, do do do. Let's see. Of fucking hell. Where's the other one? Of forty. Um, it's kind of. It's not like this, but it is like this. So. Yeah. So basically the same ammunition, however the OF-40 Mark II, as you can see, my one is spaded and we have 830 horsepower at 2200 revs and this one has 1000 horsepower. So it's faster, um, however I'm not sure about the armour, so let's have a look. Let me get this away. No. <laughs> Uh, the only real difference then is it's faster okay um, it's entirely up to you guys I don't want to tell you what to do with your money personally I'd put a talisman on OF 40 Mark 2 but if you've got some extra pennies laying around well you know it's entirely up to you guys we we'll take it for a quick test drive oh hang on have I got the decal for it I'm not sure if I do I'm not sure I didn't actually notice if it came up or not. Okay, not there. It wouldn't be on this one. Um, oh, fuck, that's not Italian tanks. No, I don't think so. No, it doesn't matter. It's this literally the UAE badge sort of thing with an eagle on it. So let's take this for a quick test drive and see see how fast it is. I mean we know how the cannon works if you've played the OF-40 Mark II you'll know it's a really good tank it's a little bit light on armour but where, what it lacks in armour it makes up for in speed T-64 back there it be a little bit higher there actually I might actually go there. <laughs> it was a bit of a weird bounce, but it went in. Again. Yeah, 
set them on fire. Okay, let's stick it cruise control. See how stable the cannon is. Pretty much. It's not as. I don't know. Is it as bad? It doesn't seem as bad. I'm pretty sure that the uh, OS 40 cannon is a bit more. But it seems alright. Doing 31 miles an hour, it's not much wobble in it. Maybe it is worth getting this, it doesn't seem to wobble as much. Reload's not too bad either, but I'm not really putting much uh, into the reload mode, I'm sort of ignoring that. that actually comes out. It's probably going to be the same as the OS 40. Still pretty manoeuvrable as well, let's see, there's quite a new steering. It turns really well, I do like the neutral steering, it, it feels really smooth, really, really smooth. Lovely. Are you going to burn out or do I have to finish you off? There we go. <laughs> and you also get access to do your motion. But it does obviously use them all <laughs> as soon as you fucking fire them. But still pretty good. We also have the Arietti as well. Yep, that's right. Italy has another Arietti. Um, it has more armor, as you can see on it. Let's see. Let's do the armor protection analysis. Let's see. Mirica. Let's go to... Oh the M1A1 I'm not sure it's going to be a fair test using these um, APFSDS against this but we'll see <laughs> straight through straight through oh dear oh dear <laughs> um, ok hang on let's this is a 9.7, so we're going to end up facing these. Let's go for... Fucking hell. What can we go for that's not too OP? <laughs> um, let's go to Britain. Let's go to Britain. Let's go for the Challenger 2. The L26. That's going to cut straight through it as well, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay, let's go back to the US. Let's try... Let's try the missile. Oh my god, it's just... Hopefully this it, this is fixed. I, I'm pretty sure... It's got to be, come on. It's saying 515... Or oh, 518 millimetres there. So if... Hang on, hang on. If it's 518 millimetres at that point... Let's... Alright. Let's see, what are the ranges? What are the ranges? So let's go, yeah, 500 and, yeah, 500 metres, 484. So right about here, uh, yeah, it just, oh dear, it just doesn't have it, does it? Let's go back a bit further, 2,400 metres. <laughs> oh God, okay, let's go back a bit further. 4,100 metres. Okay, let's go on to the... <laughs> I, I, I'm just... Let's hope... Let's just hope that that's a bug. I'm hoping it's a bug. Please tell me that's a bug. That's that's not good. Oh, God. Oh, poor Italy. <laughs> poor, poor Italy. So, we're on to the F86K. Um, I believe this is called the Super Sabre. And... I'm looking forward to this. It only gets access to air-to-air -air missiles. It has the AM-9 
9B Sidewinders. You get two of them and 20 millimeter cannons. I did have a little test flight of this when I first came on and I gotta say it's fast but it's not it's not fast as I thought it was gonna be. It's not as quick as I thought. So let's get the engine going. You do have afterburners for this so at least you have them. However when I did the same test as the Hunter and I climbed up to about 20,000 and dove down I wasn't able to sustain any sort of max speed it just seemed to really peter out really quickly so hopefully I can do it this time around we'll see, I'll give it another go we'll take out this mix of engines again and then we'll see how fast we can get it going on the deck Radar. The radar, the radar doesn't actually work, but you know, we can deal with that, we're doing 691, at this point the hunt was going faster, and I do have the arm burn on as well, so we're kind of popping out here at 693, so the hunt is faster, than the hunt is straight up, about Jesus Christ just about made for me Maybe it's placeholder, maybe it's not, I don't know. 
have to wait and see. I, I did assume that that was a supersonic jet. Maybe I was wrong. <laughs> so on to the Leclerc, a tank that people have really, really been waiting for. I haven't looked over its armour, not in the slightest, so we're going to do that now. It doesn't say it has turret armour at the moment, so if it starts going through, it's probably because it hasn't been modelled in properly. So let's go to the Abrams and those darts. Let's take it back down to 500. Okay, let's see. Straight through. Um, yeah, I don't think it's been marked, uh, modelled in. As you can see just there, it's saying 163 millimetres. Um, We've got more sort of armour there. And yeah, I I think that's been modelled in actually, the lower glacis. But it doesn't look like the turret's been modelled. Which is unfortunate because I really, really wanted to test it out. Yeah, look at that, even the heat FS is going through. So they haven't modelled it at the moment, which is really shitty and I was hoping they did. Oh, god damn it. Well, it doesn't stop us from having a look anyway. So we've got composite here. Yeah, it's not even giving any values, is it? We've got composite here. It looks quite chunky, to be honest, you know, going round. So I'm assuming once this is modelled correctly, it should have a decent amount of protection. A little bit thinner here, but other than that, I mean, this looks really nice and chunky. So... We just have to see. We only get a three-man crew, but we do have this huge breach. A lot of side armour there, so not too bad. Um, 44 miles an hour, five-second reload. The ammunition we get is heat FS as stock, 600 millimetres at all ranges at zero degrees. And then we get the OFL120 FL APFS DS, which is 525 millimetres at 10 metres. Even at 1500 meters, it's still 500 millimeters of pen. This is one hell of a fucking shell. So let's take this for a quick test drive. I'm going to take a first shot at that um, T64 BV that's on the hill because it should cut straight through it. Okay. This takes more than one shot to be upset. <laughs> Fucking hell. Straight through. This tank is going to take no prisoners. Ready up the heat. Okay, didn't kill that one straight away. That doesn't matter if we're good. Fuck. Oh, I'm going to like this. This is literally football. Oh, it is going to be the first tank I will go to the outside We only have a coaxial 7.6 to do on So, nothing to do here. Save life is a bit wobbly though. And you can see that it's quite a bit of a turn. That's really wobbly. Although you, it's still on target. It's about 1 mile an hour though. It has a bit of wobble in it, but still, it's not too bad. I've played the tanks that have worked wobble at quite a lower speed. Not bad. There we go. This is a really, really good looking tank, I must say. And we do have 360 smoke. So if I stop, um, I'm not entirely sure where all the smoke launchers are, to be honest with you. Oh, okay, I see them now. You can see just in the back of the turret there, we have two on that corner, two on that corner, and four at different angles on each side of the turret. So when I fire the grenade, we should get a 360 smoke screen. Nice. <laughs> And again, yeah, 
So you can fly these quite, you can fly quite a few of these. That's pretty decent. So if you do get caught and you're surrounded, you can literally drop a huge smoke screen. And that is big as well. That is a massive smoke screen. Can we shoot directly behind us though? I don't think we can. I think we've got a bit of a step. Yeah. Unfortunately. The biggest problem with modern uh, main battles is the engine is so big. But, I'm looking forward to this. I just hope by the next dev server that they've actually modelled in the composite armour because it would be really nice to test it out and just see how effective it is and what it can defend against and what it can't. So then we're on to this, this monstrosity of a SPAAG. So we have 10 Roland AAA, AAM missiles and 4 smoke grenade launchers which are right there. Um, armour, well, 30mm um, <laughs> upper glacis and lower glacis couple of little bits of track um, really not much in a way of armor protection have a three man crew you have the extra missiles inside here um, engine transmission fuel tanks radio station so it's got a bit of room but the ammo is quite obviously compact because it's only small let's have a look so we have a default Roland 1 which is 38 millimeters of pen at all ranges on all degrees of armor then we have the Roland 3 which is 52 millimeters of armor penetration at all ranges at 0 30 and 60 degrees so not too bad um, what are the speeds on these I didn't actually check um, speed of trajectory 560 meters a second which isn't bad that's, that's quite fucking quick so let's take this for a test drive and you can see it in action so we've got the Roland Freeze um, the better ones ready and willing to go you can look look at the fucking speed that goes around let's see Is this okay we get 15 kilometers um, on the radar so Oh, there we go, there we go, I see ya, I see ya. Bullshit. Oh, there we go, that should make it easier. Hit, hit, hit! <laughs> or not, I'm not quite sure why. Oh, there we go. And it did that. Yeah, it's got a weird habit of doing that. I'm not, I'm assuming it's because these need to be reloaded in a certain position. So once you find your missile, the turret turns itself and locks back into place. As you can see, I can't actually turn the turret at the moment. So let's wait for this one to come back round. Lock him. This should, yeah, there we go. That hit him perfectly. Right, let's have a go at this T-64. Do the zoom. Oh, it doesn't have the best zoom. Um, and it doesn't have the best pen on these missiles. Let's go for the turret ring. I'll try to the best I can without hitting the cannon. Oh, there we go. Shit. Damn. <laughs> so there you go. That definitely fucking works for killing um, T-64s. Now, I'll obviously be able to kill the SPAA. Can I kill this? Um, no, I've got to wait for the reload. Let's see if I can kill the IT-1. No, I'm still waiting on the reload. <laughs> I'm still waiting on the reload. And then we'll just see how fast this goes. Come on, almost there. Why is it still reloading? Are you... No, I can't fucking fire. Are we having issues? 
I think we might be bugged. Hang on. Let's see if it does it again. Yeah, I think we've bugged that. <laughs> we've definitely bugged that out. Okay. Right, we're going to ignore the planes. We're going to go straight for this um, IC-1. Okay, got the driver. I'm not sure why it's reloading. I've got two missiles just sat there waiting to go. Oh, there we go. Better. So, yeah. It's pretty good at killing tanks as well as planes. Especially if it's a T-64 BV. That was an excellent shot. It literally just decimated. Okay, so this is the last vehicle we're going to be looking at. The AMX-30 Super. And this is pretty much an AMX-30 but with a stabiliser. You don't have the 20mm um, coaxial. You, instead you get a um, 50 cal. You do get more smoke grenade launchers. Um, the armor's the same. The turret's slightly different. The biggest... Um, improvements are obviously the stabilized cannon and this engine this is basically the same engine that the leo one has i believe it, yeah i believe it's leo one so it's the same engine the leo one has and this is a premium we're not going to go over the armor because it is pretty much exactly like um the amx 30 um except for as i say stabilized and yeah the, you see the turret slightly longer slightly different shaped turret so yeah stabilized cannon no 20 millimeter coaxial but a better engine which is always good this is going to be a premium this is a pre-order pack i believe um, let's have a test drive and see how good it is oh actually it might be like the amx 30 b2 but with a stabilizer i know it's one of them anyway and it's got a weird little lippy thing now and a big spiky thing at the top <laughs> let's see didn't kill it didn't kill it with the heat let's try again there we go it's about number four so let's go for the t64 get the cannon barrel of course I did because of all the things to hit why would I not hit right there okay you've got the commander let's go for the lower glacis pretty fast reload as well and I have an extra here so I just literally bunged it in and um, started recording really let's try a bit higher that was low there we go lovely so let's start rolling Test that in the same line. 8.7 It's actually really stable. Let's see what to get a bit quicker though. Let's see that Leo uh, engine work. Great miles an hour. So, 30 miles an hour. There's a little bit of wiggle in the stabilizer, but to be honest, it's not as bad as a foot speed. But make sure the sevens do have more wiggle than they should do. You know, especially when you're driving along. But this actually seems really stable. Which is nice. I, I, I quite like it. I'm not sure that I'll be willing to do purchase it. But I do like the fact that it is a 8.3, 8 8.7 with a stabilizer it's something the French have needed for a long time especially to help get into the the higher tiers you know the top tier French tanks so 8.7 that's pretty decent I like that I'm now I'm split whether I, whether I want this or the um, premium Japanese destroyer so I can get a head start on the Japanese um, Navy I'm not sure I'm not sure. Oh no, decisions! <laughs> Don't make me think! Oh god, I might be cheeky and ask for both of them. I'm not sure I'm going to get away with that though. <laughs> I think I'm going to have to... I'm going to have to be charming, I think, and be polite and see, how, see what I can wangle out of Gaijin. 
Okay, guys, thanks for joining me in this video. If you are new to the channel and you have enjoyed today's content, please feel free to subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you do, guys, hit the notification bell for future updates on content. Also, guys, a thumbs up is appreciated. It does help the channel. And until next time, guys, I will see you soon and have fun.